Let's just set the stage first so that people who haven't been following closely understand. Um, insurance companies, for the most part, do not cover pandemics, even if they offer business interruption coverage. Most of those clauses, and most of those have clauses that say a pandemic would not qualify for coverage on this front. Lawmakers, both at the state and the federal level, have threatened in some cases to say they are going to take that clause out and make insurers pay otherwise, pay anyway. Um, that would be devastating in terms of the losses that insurers would be required to pay. It would invalidate all of those claims that are out there. Um, but that leaves us in a pretty difficult position of trying to figure out what to do um, in the future, correct? It, it does, Becky. And, and good morning. And, and um, nice to hear you. And thank you for having me on. Um, pan, you know, pandemic, um, just to get back to the basic principle, is unlike any other catastrophe, um, it has no time limit and has no geographic bound. Therefore, if you tried to just insure pandemic for business interruption, the loss is essentially, in a practical terms, infinite, and insurers have a finite balance sheet. And so the insurance industry's ability to take pandemic risk is very limited. Um, unless we have a public-private partnership of some kind in the future where the government takes the what we would call tail risk and, and limits the amount of liability that the insurance industry would take. And in that case, insurers could play a, a broader role in assuming coverage in the future should we have future pandemics. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, however, the proposal that you've laid out, I, I think some people might look at it and say, OK, this is a very limited amount of risk that the insurers would be taking on. If I understand this correctly, I know that there are three different baskets, and that's for uh, small businesses and then mid- and large-sized businesses. Um, it, it sounds to me like you're, you're suggesting that insurers would go in and say that they would provide maybe the first 6 percent of, uh, of the claims that come in on the first dollars for those, so 6 percent of what you get in the initial claims, but they would be limited to $15 billion. Um, I, I look at what businesses are taking right now, and that $15 billion would disappear pretty quickly. Um, I think you yourself took a, a charge of over $1.2 billion just for what you're anticipating your COVID risk is right now, even without offering business interruption coverage for that. You know, Becky, fundamentally, to manage the health care crisis, we've shut down the economy. And in a future pandemic, we're going to have to have a better health care response than the notion of having to shut down the economy to manage a pandemic. And no, the private sector is incapable of assuming a broad economic shutdown. So if you assume that we would have a better health care response and would be more limited, then the kind of percentage you're talking about would go up significantly, number one. Number two, mm -hmm. across the program, we start with $30 billion that the insurance industry would assume, $15 billion for, the, for small businesses, and another $15 billion for mid-sized and large. And then that number grows from $30 billion to $60 billion um, over time, um, fundamentally equating over just the business interruption to a loss that's very close to Hurricane Katrina and what the insurance industry mm. paid out in total. And this would be just for the business interruption peril. Remember, we still have to pay workers' compensation and all kinds of liability protections and all kinds of other insurance exposures that will be incurred. Um, putting business interruption aside, the industry is likely to pay out in pandemic. So we keep it in perspective somewhere in the range of $100 billion globally.